Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kim Ferguson, and this is another May I Scrap Lift You for May 2nd of 2023, where I will be scrap lifting a layout done by Scrappy Gal 13. So I will have a picture of her layout at the beginning of my video and at the end of my video. I've chosen to do these live on camera for you rather than doing voiceovers. So that's why they're going to be at the beginning and the end. Just kind of have some time restraints right now and that's working better for me. You might just leave a comment below what your favorite is. Do you like the voiceovers when I do them or do you like the real time? Because I'll probably be giving a little bit more story and uh, you know, just kind of background on the layout. And I think I like to do that myself. So just, you know, just make some conversation below. I'd love it. So let's dig in. So the first thing with the layout by Scrappy Gal 13 was mixed media on the background. I went ahead and I did it on my own off camera because mixed media is not something that I typically go to. It's not my first thing to think of. That is why I specifically chose the layout that Scrappy Gal 13 had done because I want to branch out and do more mixed media. So let me explain how I did this. I don't know how she did hers, but I took my Close My Heart to stamp pad. I flipped it around and then I simply just scraped this down the white card stock. So you're going to see that there are lines that go through the layout here. So there is a gal, Tanya. I'm sorry, Tanya, I don't remember your last name, but she is another maker and she showed how to take our cardstock, put it in a scoreboard, and then use your scoring tool to go through or your bone folder and make the lines. But you want to make sure that you have it upside down so that the bumpy embossed edge is sticking up. Then what you do is you take your stamp pad and then I went this way again and that gave me the lines and you can also see just kind of the distressed edge up here and I was really okay with that when I first started doing it I just had the honey and it was very bright so I had shown it to my mom while we were on a Facebook video today and she's like okay I want to see what you're going to do with it so work your magic so I hope I've gotten rid of just that bright yellow. In Scrappy Gal 13's layout, she also had a plaid background. So I did go ahead and do that. This is going to be a Christmas layout. You can see Santa laying over here. So I thought the green plaid was perfect. And then the honey. And then I did the toffee. And then what I did, because she had some florals and it looked like it was probably stenciling. So I pulled out two different choices for stencils and I did go ahead and choose this one. Kind of reminded me more of Star or Poinsettia. And so I went with the Poinsettia idea and then I used my Barn Red and then my um, inking brush here. What are these called? Blending brush? There we go. And so I just took it and I just wanted to go a little bit off the edge. I rubbed this around. I only dipped into the Red Barn a couple times. I didn't want it to be really stark and stand out. I also didn't want the yellow to stand out. So those are ways that I muted this. So again, don't do a lot of mixed media. So some of you are out there like, oh, this would have been so much easier if you would have done it this way or that way. But that's how I did it. And I have to say, I really like this. I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. It really doled down that honey in the background and gives it a nice distressed uh, idea with um, the stenciling on here. So I'm good to go. So the next thing that I need to do is she had like a journaling card. So I have these Picture My Life cards from Close to My Heart. They were from a Christmas, I believe it was a mini album a few years ago. And so I cut it out because I didn't want to waste that inside because I'm going to do some tags as there were tags in the upper left hand corner. So here's my journaling spot and I, it's Christmas fun. So that's going to really be my title. And then I have some paper piecings. So here is a wreath. So this is a night before Christmas uh, paper piecing set that I've done. Everything's been put together, edge distressed. I have my highlights and everything on here. I am a very big lover of all things paper piecing. So a lot of my art is using paper piecings on my scrapbook layouts and cards. Here are the mats for my photo. So I brought in this deep red, kind of reminds me of that barn red that I have in the wreath. 
Yes, Santa is more of the vibrant holiday red because that's what he wears. Okay, so, but these colors kind of tie in more, having that forest green with the burgundy, and then you have the holiday red for Santa and the holiday green. So I do um, kind of look at this, like, did I really mix the greens right? But I think with the yellow and the red, I don't know, it's coming together. So le again, let me know what you think. I was kind of going by the colors that she used. She was pretty vibrant in the things she did and made some real bold choices. So I was trying to make bold choices. So Scrappy Gal 13, let me know what you think. Did I do you well in a scrap lift here? Did I represent your style? And then here is a rug that the tree and the little boy are gonna go on. So these are obviously paper pieced and I've put them through an embossing folder. So you can see I've kind of give it that texture of those braided area rugs. So that's gonna be going down here. I have my photo mat. I kind of wanted to go over the journaling spot. It's kind of how she had hers. There were florals and florals. So my paper piecings are taking the place of her florals that she used on her layout. Then we have a Christmas tree. Again, I have used an embossing folder to give the tree some texture. I didn't like that this was a stark white. So like it was on snow or maybe a white Christmas tree skirt, right? So I did go over it with that barn red. You can see that I did get the red up on the packages. I'm not going to worry over that. If that's where somebody's eye goes after they're, you know, looking at a layout like this, okay, let your let your eyes go there, right? <laughs> okay, so it's just a matter of where I want all these pieces to go and layer up, okay? And then she had some tags up above. And so these were cut with some thin cuts from close to my heart. So I keep them in these clear plastic envelopes with the magnetic sheet. And then I have a tub that says over here to my right. So I cut those out. And then I use a couple of old ribbons that I've had. So my mission is to get through my products and my stash and kind of on a spending freeze when it comes to my paper crafting products, I need to really be digging in and using what I have. So I pulled these old ribbons. I have the cream and the New England Ivy. So the New England Ivy is a burlap. And then the cream is just a kind of a, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, muslin, it's kind of like a muslin. And then I use my little stapler here to do kind of the tiny little staples on there to hold those ribbons in there. So brought in a few tools today as well. Brought in my old corner rounder because the picture of my life cards were rounded but my burgundy paper in the back wasn't so I wanted this to all match because of the picture of my life cards. I later thought that well maybe I should have done it for this but I didn't go that far and I'm okay that those are going to be sharp corners and that these are rounded. So a personal choice I'm okay with it. And then the final thing will to be to bring in some dovetail banners that Scrappy Gal 13 had up in this corner here. And then I brought out some of my enamel gems to put down for our last detail. So that is it. That pretty much matches or comes close to matching how Scrappy Gal 13 to put her layout together. So now we just need to put this on here. So this is going to be a layout for Christmas of 2021, the photo is of my father-in-law sitting in an office chair in our family room for Christmas day. When we have Christmas, we go around and we watch one person at a time, open their stocking and then they open their gifts. So as the family grows, you can imagine how long that takes. So <laughs> he falls asleep in the office chair. <laughs> so it's a photo of him in the most uncomfortable seat in the house, which is of course an office chair, and he's snoozing away. And so it kind of reminded me of the night before Christmas story where, you know, they're all sleeping and having the visions of sugar plum in their head and then Santa creeps in. So that is where I'm going with this layout is this is the night before Christmas and all through the house. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. <laughs> So there you go. That's about all I have memorized. But I thought this would be a perfect layout for him. There was also a little girl with this paper piecing set, but we have majority of 
boys in the Ferguson family. So I did not bring the little girl in. So I'm just trying to somewhat let that, let that lay down. I don't want it to stick yet because I want to see where I want to put my tree. And I really want that stenciling in the background to show up. I mean, I did the work, right? So let's have it show. So I think we kind of have it over here and down here. So I think that'll work. Photo's going to go there. We're going to want Santa to kind of sit kind of right over that, those Picture My Life cards. We have our wreath and I'm okay if it kind of goes behind him. So let's go ahead and press those down. I am, I'm really happy with that. All right, now we need to get some adhesive. There was already some glue dots on these. That's why you're seeing the ripped paper. They were on a frame that I have in my craft room that I decorate for each season. And I use those really sticky glue dots. And so they hold them on there pretty tight. And then it's a struggle to get them back off when I want to change it out. So that's why that's torn a little bit. Okay, we're going to stick this down here. All right. And then the tree goes next. Just making sure to get enough adhesive on here that everything's going to stick down and nothing will pull up. Because, you know, as you put the layouts in our page protector, sometimes they get snagged at the top. And these little paper piecings, if they're not glued really, really well, they will kind of have pieces and parts come off as they did when I was trying to pull them off of the glue dots. But they look okay. All right, let's kind of scooch this over. Now my photo is going to kind of slip under there. I need to be careful not to let that stick too much so I can still stick the photo in. I could always go back with my Cricut spatula and kind of lift that up a little bit if it's giving me a little bit of problem. And then here's our little guy. So do I want him to... I think I do want him up on the rug. There we go. So do any of you paper piece? I do have a Facebook group. It's one that I started in October of 2022. It is called Paper Piecing Creators. And it's just that. It's people that love to paper piece people that are wanting to learn how to paper piece, just any level that you might be in your paper piecing. And paper piecing can be SVG files that you've purchased somewhere, digital art that's like close to my heart sells, or it could be your Cricut cut. So we're really trying to grow that group. And we come together on the last Saturday of every month and we do a collaboration where we focus on a letter of the alphabet. So that's been our first challenges is just working through the alphabet. We just did the letter G this last weekend. So now for the last Saturday in May, which I believe is the 27th, it's going to be the letter H. So I did some golfing layouts. So if you saw my May I Scrap Lift You for May 1st, it was a complimentary page to my letter G golf layout. So anyway, if you like to pay for peace, we invite you to come and see what we're doing. Okay, so now what I want to do, I want to be very careful where I put these tags because I have the green right here, so I don't want to put my green, and I really want this white to pop off of that honey in the background. So that is a perfect place to put those. And I'm going to go ahead and glue them down because I already have a journaling spot down here. They're on here to meet my scrap lift from Scrappy Gal 13. All right. Okay, there we go. Slowly getting this side done. Okay, now let's go over here and let's get Santa glue down. The one thing that I really am trying to learn more and more with my paper piecing is just getting the detail fine-tuned to where these little things look like they're alive. Sometimes when you glue them together, they look a little hollow. So it's important to go back with like a white detail gel pen and really add in the personality. So you can see how I like to make the, you know, the, the little shine, the little highlight in their eyes. This one I didn't do as much work like up in their, their hat and stuff. Sometimes I go through with a gel pen and I add detail up there, but apparently I didn't on these because I don't see any. 
But I think I did so much more with the embossing folders because you can see here that I also used the embossing folder to make this wreath. When I do my paper piecings, I cut out several at a time and I assemble them sometimes for videos, sometimes not. But anyway, that's just something that I love to do and I encourage you to give it a try and maybe think about joining that Facebook group and joining in with our collaborations on the last Saturday of the month. There we go. Okay, what do you think of that? Kind of come up here. Okay, I've got the tags. I have the dovetail banners. I have the photo mats layered and I have a journaling spot. And then my paper piecings are where she has her florals. So now I wanna go into my little bag of gems here look at all this funness in here i don't want it to be where these take the show i don't want them to really out you know play everything else so i wanted to find some muted ones not really the shimmery oh those are kind of cute but there isn't really any other wood those remind me of a wood there's also sequins but i think i really want to stick with the muted so, you know, those are a little bit of a pearl, but it's better than something that's really sparkly. So let's bring these in and see what we can get off of these. Move this stuff out of the way. So again, my stash, I need to be using my stuff. Okay. So how are you doing if you're participating in the May I Scrap Lift You? Do you have all of your photos selected? Do you already have your scrap lifts picked out who you're going to follow and try to create recreate their their layout to your style i already have done that i've done the pre-work i already know what layouts i'm doing for the entire month here's the catch will i be able to do it the entire month that's always the, that's always the big question because you know life gets busy so we will see i have big 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 hopes that <laughs> yes i will be doing all of them this month so I'm really looking forward to getting my photos scrapbooked I have so many to do and I always have the best intentions to start getting faithfully on here and scrapbooking as well as just playing with my products so let me be of encouragement to you if that is where you are in your craft room too is how do you get on a schedule? How do you stick to it? And, you know, be consistent, number one. It's it's really hard when you're, you're juggling life. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, you are not alone. <laughs> Let me tell you. So just, I'm going to get on here as much as I can. I hope to get on here every day. We will see. Let's see. So going with the rules of three, I want to put some of those over in this area. So I'm just kind of looking here to see what I want to do. I think it'll be okay just to kind of have it up off of. I thought about maybe on the tree, but the tree's already got those red balls on there. So I don't want to put anything more. Okay, let's just put this here. So there, that just kind of fills in that hole. So let's just take an overall look of this. See if there's any last little bits that need any more tending to. But I I think we're good. I think this is done. It's ready for my photo, which I have right here. So let me see if I can tuck this in and show you how I do that. Because see that kind of stuck down. So I'll just stick it in like this. Of course, it will be face up. But there is my layout. So Scrappy Gal 13, thank you for your inspiration. Thank you for helping me to get out of my comfort zone and do some mixed media in the background. Whether it's how you did yours or not, I had a lot of fun doing this and it did come together. And I think the, the honey was kind of dulled down a little bit. So make sure that you look in the description below. I will put the playlist link that I um, know that is out there for May I Scrap Lift You, as well as I will give a shout out for Scrap -a Gal 13. You can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, and of course here on YouTube. I also do LinkedIn. I, I don't get much activity over there, but I do have an account there if you are interested. And I just want to wish you a wonderful May I Scrap Lift You day. And I hope to uh, hop around and see what everybody else is doing. And I ask you to do the same thing. 
like, subscribe, and share. And happy crafting. Bye.